Greetings everyone, how are you doing today? I hope everybody's doing well. As for me, I'm doing fine. My symptoms are relatively under control and I got lots of new cool projects coming up and spring is just around the corner. If you're new here, hi! My name is Sahal Abar and every week I sit down and show you a craft that I've been working on. Whether it's sewing tutorials, vintage hair tutorials, visual arts videos, easy gardening tips, lumberjacking, and all sorts of other arts and crafts, I am here for you on Fridays. This week I have a very cool project to show you. After a few gardening videos, I went back to the sewing room to show you the process of making this little history bounding outfit that I'm wearing right now. This is an Edwardian inspired cottagecore dress. I derived it from a few of fellow YouTubers Sosteen's Ghibli Core and cottagecore dresses. I used roughly the same method as her, albeit adapting it to better suit my needs and my tastes, of course. The concept is fairly simple. You start with either a Victorian or an Edwardian shirtwaist pattern and you adapt it to your preferred method of closing. I opted for a center front closure and then you fit it with a waistband and attach it to a large gathered skirt. Oh, and pockets. Obviously, you need pockets. I currently don't own any pre-made Victorian patterns, but it was my birthday recently and my husband got me some delightful literature on historical dressmaking. I have the authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques that's edited by Christina Harris and then we have a famous one in the history bounding community it's the cut of women's clothes from 1600 to 1930 by Nora Waugh and then we have the voice of fashion those are 79 turn of the century patterns with instructions and fashion plates edited and with additional material by Francis Grimble I took my pattern in this one, so I selected this shirtwaist pattern that's from 1904 and set about to draft my first Edwardian sewing pattern ever. And wow, it was a ride! Many a Star Trek Next Generation episode went by until I finally figured out how to efficiently use the diamond cutting system, but when I did it really made sense and it is fairly easy in my opinion. So before I show you how I actually made the dress, I just want to take a minute and tell you more about the diamond cutting system. Because if you're a history bounder and want to draft your own antique patterns, you ought to know more about the diamond drafting system. Let's take a look at my pattern in the voice of fashion. We have a simple pattern piece here that's a collar, which I'm not using, but for the sake of the explanation I went with the simplest pattern piece. You see that it's crossed with a bunch of lines and it's labeled with a bunch of numbers all around. To read it, you first have to locate the longest line of the pattern. It's this line here. As you can see, it starts with the letter A here. When you go down this line, you can see that the numbers get progressively larger and larger. The numbers along this line represent the distance from point A in units of length that are very specific to your own body measurements. But don't worry, there's almost no math involved. This book, I mean the voice of fashion, comes with an annex that contains original rulers that range from an 18 inches size to a 45 inches size. Each ruler is labeled with its corresponding measurement. Each ruler is worth 10 units and these these units are divided into eighths of units. So to make a ruler that's long enough, you would need to photocopy the corresponding page, make like, I don't know, five, six copies, and then you tape them onto one another, forming a long papery measuring tape. And that tape is going to be very specific to your own measurements. But which ruler should one use to draft one's own garments? Well, to draft a bodice, you'll use the ruler that corresponds with your bust measurement. So my bust is about 34 inches. 
to draft my bodice. I photocopied the page where the 34 inch ruler was at, made a few copies, taped them one to another, thus forming a long papery measuring tape. It's the same thing as this one, except the units are different. It's, it's pretty straightforward. If you're drafting a skirt or a pair of bloomers, you will use your waist measurement. My waist is between 24 and 27 inches, varies a lot due to chronic illness. So if I were to draft a walking skirt, for example, I'd probably go with a 26 inch ruler. I do the same thing. I would photocopy the page where the 26 inch ruler is at. I'd make about five or six copies and I'd tape them one to another and make myself yet another long papery measuring tape. Back to reading the pattern now. I was saying that the numbers against line A represent the distance from point A in the measurement units of your specific ruler. Once you find one of those points, you then make a perpendicular line. So you can use a tri-square or a piece of cardboard to make sure that it's really perpendicular. And there are numbers against those lines as well, as you can see. These numbers represent the distance, again, in your own measuring units, between those points and the line A, perpendicularly. After that, you can use your French curves or any tool of your choice to help you draft all of those lines that connect the points. Make sure you make a mental note to even all the seam allowances. Some are already part of the pattern and some aren't. Here they put a three quarters of an inch seam allowance and here they put no seam allowance so you gotta make sure you even all of that out. Drafting the whole shirt waist pattern took me a while, but as I kept working, I got faster at it. Once I drafted everything, I made a few adjustments to have it close in the center front instead of those weird side front fasteners that the Edwardian shirt waists usually feature. I added 3 inches of seam allowance on the center front so the pieces overlap and are folded over twice to support buttons and buttonholes. As for the sleeve pattern piece, I wanted a shorter sleeve that I could either wear over the elbow or that would sit naturally just right under it. I often get my hands dirty, I need to wash them often and I just I don't like wet sleeve. So for me it's just more practical to have a shorter sleeve but I made the whole sleeve in my mock-up because I wanted to see for myself exactly how many inches I need to shave off. My mock-up revealed plenty of adjustments that I needed to make, mostly around the neck and the arm size. I also decided to cut 7 inches from the sleeves, splitting it in two at the center and removing about 3.5 inches on either side of that split. After that, I taped the two pieces together, I used my French curves to throw out the seam lines and that was it. Usually these Edwardian shirt waists featured a high neckline but I wanted to forego that because I want to be able to wear my cottagecore dress with many different dainty lace collars and the lace collars with the high neckline I think it would have been too much. So instead I decided to just trim my neckline with some bias tape and finally I did just a simple rectangular cuff for my elbows. Once I had a final version of my pattern I was ready to start cutting into my fabric. Once I've got a final version of my pattern, I was ready to start cutting into my fabric. I've added a half inch of seam allowances wherever needed and set about to assemble the bodice. I'll cut a skirt, a waistband and some bias tape later. First thing I worked on was the front part of the bodice. The front top gathers are sandwiched in between two gore pieces. I've pressed the front placket on all pieces and I marked the gore where I wanted the gathers to begin and to end in order to stitch those two pieces right sides facing each other, leaving the part that needs to be gathered unsewn for then. This left me with a gap on my seam line with one side much larger than the other. This needed to be gathered to fit along that width. To make the gathers, I did two parallel rows of running stitches along the seam line and on the seam allowance. After that, I pulled on the threads, pinned the gathers along the edge, distributing them as evenly as I could, and then I backstitched everything into place by hand.
after that, I could pin the other gore piece on the other side, thus sandwiching the gathers between the two gore layers. This time, I sewed it by machine, going over the same seam line. I gave everything a good press and ended up with gathered front bodice panels. The back panel also features a pleat, so I went ahead and pressed and tacked it into place. I also top stitched the topmost few inches to prevent the pleats from ballooning over my shoulder blades. Then the shoulder seams, the side seams, as well as the inner sleeve seam were done with French seams. The sleeves were then pinned and backstitched onto the arm's eyes, again leaving the topmost part to be gathered with two rows of running stitches, a lot of pins, and some good old backstitching. I went over this seam line with the machine, and then I made cuffs, which are simple rectangles of fabric, which I double folded on the ironing board, and then I fit them to the bottoms of my sleeves using, you guessed it, more gathers. Once one side was backstitched to the gathers, the other was folded over it and hand-stitched as well. I was then ready to make myself a waistband. Remember that my center front bodice has 3 inches of seam allowances on each side to allow for a buttonhole placket. The same has to be done on my waistband and on my skirt. Taking this into account, I've cut my waistband twice. On one of them, I pressed the center front buttonhole plackets, and on the other, I trimmed them away and pressed a half inch of seam allowance all around instead. I tried my bodice on and pinned the waistband on it, using pins and a needle and some thread to mark where the top of the waistband sits on the bodice. This will be my waistline. I took my time and I trued up both sides of my waistline, making sure that they were symmetrical, and when I felt confident that I had a good curve, I trimmed the excess away. I marked where I wanted the gathers to begin and to end. I wanted them somewhat narrower than the bust ones to kind of accentuate the cinched waist effect. As with the bust and the shoulder gathers, I sewed all the ungathered parts by machine, leaving a gap on my seam line with one side much larger than the other. This needed to be gathered with the good old running stitches, pins and back stitches. Of course, I went over this hand seam with the machine. And now, a skirt! This dress features a large gathered rectangle skirt. I basically cut two floor-length rectangular panels, salvage to salvage. Including the seam allowances and the hemming allowance, mine was 39 inches long and the fabric was at least 54 inches wide. I had to make center front plackets as well, which I hand-stitched on both sides, ending up with a skirt that's at least 100 inches in circumference. And, of course, I made pockets and fabric them to the side seams of the skirt. I matched the center fronts, the set seams, as well as the center backs of the waistband and the skirt, and I pinned them together. I only machine stitched the center front plackets, and I gathered the skirt to fit it to my waistband, working in sections while binge watching me some Star Trek. And finally, all was left to do was a bit of finishing. There was a whole lot of hemming, of course, because my skirt circumference is over 100 inches. And then I trimmed the neckline with some homemade double-folded bias tape. And off-camera, I made some buttonholes and sewed on some buttons, as well as some hooks and eyes, as some of the buttons are only decorative. And that was it! That is it for today. Of course, I would like to thank you so, so much for watching. I am so 
proud of this project. It's extremely comfortable. It has pockets. It's gonna be very practical for me, especially during those summer evenings where we want to sit outside, but there are just too damn many bugs. These large skirts hopefully will protect me. I think I'm like never stop swishing those skirts around. It is so much fun. And the best thing is this dress cost me under 15 bucks in materials. Can you believe it? I took about a total of four yards of fabric, four and a half yards maybe. It was three bucks a yard at Fabric Veil, was in their clearance area, and the buttons already had them. All in all, 10 out of 10. I'll definitely do this again. I'd like to thank you so so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Have you made a similar project? If so, please tell me all about it in the comments down below. If you enjoy watching sewing tutorials, vintage hair tutorials, visual art videos, easy gardening classes, lumberjacking, and all sorts of other arts and crafts, you may subscribe to this channel because I am here for you on Fridays. You may also check out my Instagram at Galkanglukai Regina. I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. There you may find even more crafty content. Until next time, I wish you a great weekend. May the forthcoming week be gentle to you. Until then, take care of yourself, make sure you drink plenty of water, and I'll see you next Friday! Bye!